Soil acidity is widespread throughout Western Australia's wheat belt and results in an estimated four to five hundred million dollar loss in annual production. It's why the Grains Research and Development Corporation has previously supported soil acidity research in the state. And while currently the federal government's Caring for Our Country program is contributing funding to a joint state government and private enterprise project. What we're really trying to target is the soil pH at 10 to 30 centimetres through this zone here. These two men are key researchers in this soil acidity project. There are a few heavier soil types which are not yet at risk that are, have higher pHs, but generally you know, we're in West Australia dominated by sandy soils and, and most of those soils have got low pHs, about 80% of, of the, the wheat belt and yes, across the whole wheat belt. Under the Caring for Our Country soil acidity project, grain growers are able to have soil samples taken on a cost share basis. The landholder pays for the top 10 centimetres of the sample, while the federal government covers the cost of the next 20 centimetres. It's the deeper soil sampling that is critical, as it's where acidity levels are most problematic. We acidify those two layers, the 10 to 20 and the 20 to 30 centimetre layers, and they are the areas that need to be identified so that liming requirements can be produced. While we've been getting benefits and advances in other areas of agriculture, it's been against a negative background of increasing acidification. Um, I think now that we've got to a point where it's one of the most limiting factors on, on much of the farms, we're actually seeing. While soils naturally acidify, albeit very slowly, there are two major contributing factors to WA's soil acidity problem. One is the inefficient use of nitrogen-based fertiliser, and the other is the removal of plant material that would otherwise return some alkalinity to the soil. The effects of acidity are insidious, if you like. They're not highly visible, as if you had a, a nutrient deficiency in the crop. Um, they, the effects of acidity in the subsurface prevent um, access to moisture and nutrients, so you ha have a sort of a, a less thrifty, thrifty crop. How acidity affects roots from taking up sufficient water and nutrient is a complex chemical process. One that involves the breakdown of ammonium nitrogen into nitrate and hydrogen ions. Excess nitrate ions are leached down into the soil profile, attracting oppositely charged nutrients such as sodium, potassium or calcium as they go. Hydrogen ions left behind lower the soil's pH level, increasing soil acidity. Plant organic matter tends to be slightly alkaline, and if it's returned to the soil, it can tie up some of these free hydrogen ions, which help to correct the pH balance. The organic matter has another benefit in that it keeps naturally occurring aluminium bound up. However, low levels of organic matter and an acidic soil pH allows the aluminium to dissolve into the soil water and become toxic to plant roots. The result is that plants don't get the moisture and nutrient needed to do well, so crop yields decline. Most of the nutrients are more available if you've got that sort of pH somewhere between five and a half and six in the surface where most of the nutrients are. Um, herbicides can have better effect, the crops can be uh, stronger and they can be compete with weeds better. So lots of other parts of the jigsaw all fit in. While the West's wheat belt soils might be more susceptible to acidification compared to the eastern states, the West has one thing the East doesn't. Good deposits of high quality, fine grained lime sand. Well, one of the advantages of lime sand compared to limestone is that nature's already crushed it for us, so there's no crushing cost. It's, it's got a fine particle size, which is important, it reacts quickly. It's got high neutralising value, it's a highly pure source. WA has a number of lime pits along the coast and this one at Lancelin, about an hour and a half's drive north of Perth, has one of the largest marketing footprints, supplying lime to farms up to 600 kilometres away. Pits like this are quite rare throughout the world. They're the result of the crushed coral and seashell that was once the ocean floor being exposed as the seas receded over many thousands of years. Then the westerly winds picked up this lime and blew it on shore to become these mobile sand dunes. Over the last 15 years, on-farm lime use has increased from around 100,000 tonnes a year up to a million tonnes, but more is needed. Extrapolating from the work we did in the central wheat belt, we now estimate that about 2.5 million tonnes of lime is required 
per year for the next 10 years in order to get the, the wheat belt to a place where soil acidity is not constraining most of our farming practices. In 2011, a WA Department of Agriculture and Food survey of 110 grain growers found only a third took soil samples down to 30 centimetres. It's not the only farm practice which this project is demonstrating needs change. Research has shown 75% of farmers spread lime as a blanket application. Based on 18,000 samples, lime spread at a rate of one tonne to the hectare was likely to be correct for 35% of the area, too little for 42% and too much for 23%. In Calabarin we had a, were fortunate enough to be able to go and visit a trial that a farmer had set up 17 years earlier and it had various rates of lime at zero, two and a half and five tonnes of lime. Um, again, those could have been applied not all in one go but over a period. The soil pH profiles on those different treatments uh, the, the highly limed one or the five tonne per hectare lime one reached our targets and there were spectacular responses in both uh, wheat and barley and also a clear demonstration that the unlimed uh, profiles which were quite acidic um, had more weeds and, and obviously less yield. DAFWA recommends growers soil test to establish their soil pH profile so they can then determine the lime application rate needed over a 10 year recovery period. Often that will be two tonnes per hectare at the start of the recovery phase and may well include additional applications. When soil pH targets are reached, lime applications can revert to maintenance rates. The benefits gained in terms of improved crop yields will outweigh the cost of adding lime. Well, lime is, is a very cheap component for farming compared to lots of other inputs. One of the difficulties is that it tends to be a coastal resource and it needs to go inland. So there's, there's high freight costs, but in Western Australia, we're lucky. Lime, lime's less than $10 a tonne, as, as a general statement, sources like this. Um, so compared to the eastern seaboard where they might be paying $30, $40, $50 a tonne, we're, we're obviously in a lot better position. Lime's soil pH neutralising qualities are slow to take effect when compared to responses to fertiliser, which is why Chris Gazy talks about it taking years to achieve the soil pH targets following liming. What grain growers can do to speed up the process is source the finest lime, because the smaller particles react quicker and the higher the neutralising value, the greater the change in pH. And to help do that, Lime WA's website provides lime specification data. What we recommend is farmers go have a look at those specification sheets, find a calculator that they can plug those numbers into, and that would give them the closest source of the finest and the best lime that is most cost effective on their farm.